Okay, this is super cool, and this is actually the first time that I'm doing this, but I wanted to do more podcast-style content. I've been wanting to do more podcast-style content for a while, and it's taken me a minute to even figure out how to set up the whole system. That has been definitely a huge ordeal for this whole thing. I didn't know what I wanted the first topic of the video to be, and I thought that it would be more, like, about my career, or about OnlyFans, or my start of YouTube when I was in high school, but I think that the biggest and the most interesting thing I could even kind of start with would be my arrest, because that was just such a huge turning point in my career, and it was a huge turning point in anything that I was working for on YouTube. Uh, my mouth is so dry, and I don't know why. Traditionally, this video would be really long, and the only reason it's probably not going to be is because I only have 26-25% battery left on my camera. I kind of want to start off with the day- okay, this whole like beep 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 thing that the uh, mic app is doing is freaking me out, so one second. I'm just gonna- I'm just gonna sit here like I would normally would because- it's really starting to bother me. <laughs> Are they not? Jesus Christ. It's still going. So I wanted to kind of talk about the day I got arrested. Um, this might be a really long series of videos, but I wanted to start off with this because I feel like this is the most interesting and less arrest. That little clicking thing that's going on is really freaking me out. Okay, I turn it down on the actual receiver. <laughs> it's like a monotone uh, or metronome and it's like freaking me out. I don't even know where to start and the camera battery is dying really fast. Fuck. So kind of the, the trip leading up to the arrest was a very interesting one. So at the time I had a sugar daddy and I've always said that I didn't but I was definitely lying. I was 19. I had a sugar daddy. I wasn't paying for a week in Cabo. Um, so my sugar daddy was a lawyer who was a very, very important entertainment lawyer in New York. And obviously the charges are from New York from when I was 17. I had ran away when I was 17, met a guy, and then that will happen. I'll probably do a story time on like the lead up to the arrest. But the month before the arrest, I was like kind of settling down and finally like figuring my life out. I was in a relationship with someone I was with in high school. I was living with my best friend. I had my cat. I had a beautiful condo and it was really just like working in my favor. Like the whole thing. I need to go let my dog in. The whole month leading up to it was like really nice. I had gone to Coachella twice. I had been to Hawaii a few times with the sugar daddy and um, the sugar daddy's fiance. And it was going really well. I My first Coachella, staying in a house and not sleeping in my car. And I was working with Team 10 on photography. My friend Lexi, who's now a DJ, who will probably end up joining me on the actual podcast that I'm going to do, um, was living with me. It was working really, really well. Everything was going to plan. I had been to New York that May. And apparently, the week that I was in New York was also the week that the warrant was issued. And... In my mind, I'm like, why wouldn't you just arrest me in New York? Like, why take the energy and time out of anything? Like, you knew I was in New York. Why wouldn't you just arrest me there? Anyway, I go... So, fast forward a month to the last week of May. I had gone to my friend Lila's birthday party. And then, right after my friend Lila's birthday party, I had this trip to Cabo. We were supposed to go to the montage in Cabo. And it was this huge ordeal. I was super excited. I was in a relationship. My partner didn't know I had a sugar daddy. We had just started dating. Of course the animals want to start playing as soon as I actually start filming. I was supposed to go on this trip, right? And leading up to the trip, everything started going kind of haywire. My flight I originally missed. My second flight was canceled. My third flight I missed on the way to the airport. And the fourth flight, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to like book my own flight and go. So I did, and I booked a last minute flight because I was already at the airport from the flight I missed, and I waited a couple of hours and I got on the plane. I was super excited to go to Cabo. It was like this really big deal. And I go to Cabo, I'm there for a week. The entire time, I'm really uncomfortable. It was the last sugar daddy I had, so that experience kind of ended all of that for me. 
and the last couple days of the trip I was just so excited to be home I was like I really wish I was in bed I just I want to be home so bad I was posting all over social media that like I just desperately wanted to be home and I wanted to see the cat and my ex and I wanted to like just lay in my own bed and be in that bed and ironically that was the last time I had ever seen that like that home because when I got off the plane at LAX and gone through customs my global entry didn't work and I thought that was really weird because I've had global entry since I was 16 and it's that thing where you like scan your hand and your face or whatever and they like bypass most of customs for you um it's like a background check thing and I was googling in line why what are the reasons my global entry would stop working oh my god no I forgot I just remembered I had TSA pre-check and global entry and my TSA pre-check when I was boarding the flight leaving LA was revoked and I thought it was so weird so not only did I miss my flight four times or three times and then had to get on a different flight my TSA pre-check was revoked that week and I was like freaking out because I was like why would my TSA pre-check be revoked and I didn't know that they were linked um and I went on the website for TSA pre-check and it was like this has been revoked and I had no idea what that meant and I was googling it and there were only two or three options one of which was that I like died one was that I have a federal warrant and the other one I don't really remember but I was like I haven't done anything wrong like I don't because once again this I, I got arrested when I was 19 and when this all happened I was 17 the charges and the reasoning for the charges wasn't even because of me it was something that my ex did that I got caught up in so I'm sitting here thinking like there's no way I have a warrant that's not why it must be a misunderstanding and I got on the plane anyway went on this trip and then fast forward back to when I got off I didn't know that my global entry was revoked yet so when I go on I try to use global entry it's not working and the sugar daddy who's the lawyer is like a few people in front of me he's trying to like get out of the line and I got up to the person and I remember they were like Christian Aaron they read my full name and my birthday and they were like the description of the person in this doesn't look like you but we have to pull you aside and ask you questions anyway just in case so obviously they do that um I'm like waving down the sugar daddy who's already through and I'm like I don't know what to do I'm like freaking out so in that incident I was pulled to a back room in the airport at LAX we were flying Delta and Delta has like this like back room jail thing so I was sitting there I was there for maybe like two or three hours while they were trying to figure out if I even am the person this warrant is attached to because all the issues are wrong and the social security number wasn't right and my birthday was my birthday and my name were the only things correct and the description of the person sounded like someone else so I was sitting here this whole time like oh my god this is going to be a misunderstanding I'm going to be able to go home and it turns out it wasn't um and the lawyer had already contacted a lawyer friend of his in New York who was one of the best criminal defense attorneys and had already contacted my dad which by the way was a really uncomfortable situation trying to explain as to why my sugar daddy is contacting you let alone why I have a sugar daddy or that I'm getting arrested like the whole situation was like fucked for me to try to explain to my parents um so I get like ushered out of the airport little holding area after I had been sitting there for a couple of hours and they usher me into a car and then they bring me to the um LAX jail that's like a block or two outside of LAX I sit there for like two days every single police officer was so sweet to me like they were all women and they were all like so ridiculously nice to me probably because I don't look like a criminal <laughs> um even though criminals come in all shapes and sizes and everything but I just didn't look like a traditional person they would be ripped out of an airport jail um not to mention the way I look now like I'm 24 and I looked way younger then so they really were like confused but and they gave me like um little snacks and like gave me a cell to myself so that I didn't have to deal with anyone else um because that was one of my biggest concerns was that I was small and I'm obviously gay and I'm really um fragile of a person so like I could be taken advantage of really easily and I have been most of my life whereas a lot of other people could see that and find me as a target so I requested to be alone 
and I was alone for that weekend. So I got arrested Saturday morning. Um, I think it was June 1st, 2019. I think that was a Saturday or it was a Friday, one of the two. But if you didn't know, in order to be transferred to an actual jail and get bailed, or and get bail to be bailed out, you have to go to court. Like a judge has to tell you these things. Um, a judge has to tell you what the bail would be and basically like where you'd be going. So I'm sitting in this little Santa Monica jail for three days by myself with nothing to eat but protein bars or like um, granola bars. They were like nat- Nurture's Valley or Nature's Valley granola bars. And I remember they were the, um, they were orange. I think that that's peanut butter. I'm not really sure, but they were orange. And then I had little, like, boxes of juice, like, they would give you in, like, a high school or, like, middle school. And, uh, I didn't have a TV or news or anything. I was wearing, uh, a full Adidas tracksuit, my Balenciaga. Oh, no, I was wearing a, yeah, a full Adidas tracksuit, black, the tracksuit pants, the black hoodie, I didn't have a shirt under it. I was wearing Versace underwear and Yeezys. And they made me take the shoelaces out of my Yeezys. But the way that Yeezys are made, it was actually really convenient because I was able to keep wearing them and they were really comfortable. Um, So for those three days, I still had my clothes and I was kind of like warm and it wasn't like a really uncomfortable situation except for the fact that I had to sit in silence without any sort of entertainment for three straight days in a room by myself um, with no contact to the outside world or to anyone. I remember um, my ex at the time came to visit me once, took all of my stuff, like took my phone and everything and didn't tell me why. Um, And I didn't even know that he had done that until a week or so later. He had told me that he went through my phone and found out that I had a sugar daddy and was like really upset and that found out that I had an OnlyFans and was upset. We were only together for like a month, so I'm like, bro, chill. But, um yeah that was that whole ordeal he was an alcoholic so he was drinking heavily um before coming in and Lexi went with him but they wouldn't let Lexi come in and Lexi told me several times yeah Lexi told me that she wanted to give the viewer slots to him even though he only came once because after he took my phone he didn't want to see me again but um Lexi wasn't able to make it back out there I don't think I think actually, yeah, I don't remember if Lexi saw me or not. I really don't. For some reason in my mind, I feel like she did, but she says she didn't, like, that she was in the car in the parking lot the whole time. But um, her side of the story is probably hilarious because she got to go through the back end of it, talking to my parents and, like, getting my stuff to Florida and dealing with all that. So in the span of the three days before I went to court, um, my ex had moved all of my stuff and my cat without telling me to Florida to his apartment. Um, or to his parents' house, and didn't tell me, which is something that I'm still dealing with now, to this day, even five years later. When I took my stuff back and took my cat back, he had a bunch of, like, a bunch of stuff happen, and I'm still dealing with it, so I don't want to talk about it yet. Um, But how, can you imagine what I'm going through at this time as a 19-year-old alone, isolated without phone calls, without anyone visiting me, and no idea why I'm even in jail. No one had told me the charges yet. So I still had no idea why I was in jail and I didn't know the charges for a while. So when I went to the, um, the court in LA, they, on Monday, I had sat in this cell with like 10, 15 other people waiting for my little court date. And they told me that I wouldn't be able to be released. I wouldn't have a bail and they can't renew my charges because they're based out of New York and I have to be extradited. So that was fun. Um, my dad told me that I needed to learn my lesson and I didn't even know what my lesson I was learning was yet and so my dad didn't want to do anything at the time um a month I don't want to go into too heavy detail on what went on inside the jail jail that I was in unless you guys want to know then I'll do a separate video but my the camera is almost dead so I don't have enough time to go through what actually happened while I was there but um I was there for a month before I was extradited to New York and I finally got bail um where I was also in isolation in New York, but the LA situation is definitely very interesting because I was there for a month and, um, it just was a very interesting situation. I'll have to probably write down everything that I actually went through 
um, so that I know I don't forget anything, and it might take a while to plan that video out. Um, but, yeah, there was a month in between the three days that I had spent leading up to it and the week that I had in New York before I was released. I don't know how much detail to go into in this video, mostly because the camera's gonna die, and that that's that I wasn't prepared to go into a full story time. I didn't even know what I was gonna talk about until I turned the camera on, so I have no idea what I was planning on doing. But um it's so hard not to look at myself in the frame rather than looking at the camera. I think I'm gonna leave it off here for this first little series because obviously I wanna do like a real podcast and like a whole situation and I feel like I want to go into more detail like that, but that's my first couple days. I feel like it was really, really scary, especially not knowing why I was there. Thank you, douchebag, who randomly turned on a lawnmower or something right now. Um, I don't even know if you guys can hear it because I took off the headphones, but... It was really scary, and I mean, I was kind of, like, I deserved it. I mean, I definitely knew what was going on when these charges took place, um, but I didn't have any involvement to the extent that the media made it seem, especially considering I didn't have any other jail time except for the jail time from when I just, my dad didn't want to bail me out and I was stuck being extradited. I got no jail time. I just got probation. So like, like clearly I wasn't involved that much. Um, I have no idea what happened to the other guy. I have my theories, but I can go into more detail in the future. I feel like that definitely will be something I want to do just to like talk about experiences in my life. But yeah, that, that week leading up, to the arrest I was at the montage in Cabo and it sounds beautiful it sounds really nice but when you're in a really uncomfortable situation it really isn't and you don't have any chance to actually enjoy it like I was super excited I'm very androgynous like in life and I finally started to realize that recently that like in my sense when fashion makeup beauty nothing has gender to me I enjoy all of it and I was really excited because Lexi took me to get my nails done for the first time in my life and it was her idea but I loved it and I remember the first thing that happened when I landed in the montage was my sugar daddy being really mad at me and being like I'll pay you $500 right now to rip them off right now at this bar so I bit them and popped them all off and I got the $500 which ended up going to my lawyer but in my mind um at the time I was like okay I mean these were only like 60 bucks anyway like I could just go get new ones when I get back and still make money but it ended up going towards my lawyer so it helped um but it was just a really uncomfortable situation the whole week I just really didn't want to be there I was at the point in my life where I didn't feel like I really wanted to be in that realm of things anymore like I didn't want to owe my life to someone else um I've owed my life to someone else most of my life and it just didn't feel fair or right and then all I wanted to do was be home. And of course, the second I get home, I get arrested and I never see that house again. So my camera's actually about to die. I really enjoyed telling this story. Um, I mean, it was only like a three or four day storyline. But if you want to know the actual details of everything that happened while I was in jail for a month, please let me know. I'll start writing everything down as I remember it and give you a full like actual storyline as well as if you want to know about the week in New York and anything else that's happened in my life um I'm ready to pretty much just like tell all and actually be honest um and stop lying about having sugar daddies in my past yeah I'm basically ready to like talk I really enjoy talking and I feel like this would be really fun for us to do together so if you like this please subscribe give it a like comment down below any topic any situation anything that you want the truth about or that you just want to know about and i will go into detail about that story and actually be open about it if you enjoyed it all of my links are down below give it a like you know what to do thank you for watching